I'm either on to something or I've lost my mother loving mind. in the works the show where we update you guys on the progress we're making on personal projects and what's going on around the shop in general now we have a lot of exciting things to get to in this video we're working with a whole bunch of new tool dealers and manufacturers it's very exciting we got the extension on our building in progress that building is going to allow us to open up for events and for classes hopefully that building will be up around the end of summer and we'll be able to start holding classes and different kinds of events in the fall if COVID permits. We'll just have to wait and see, but the building is underway. We have our concrete foundations poured for the uprights. We have everything ready to go to start putting that building together very soon. Now, as I mentioned, we're working with some great tool dealers and equipment makers. You guys know that we work with Even Heat. You've seen us use that in a few videos. We're gonna address the kiln a little bit. Of course, red label abrasives. If you guys are in need for any kind of sandpaper, whether it's hand sanding or belt sander, red label is definitely your choice. The quality is uncomparable and their top notch customer service cannot be beat. Now, speaking of belt sanders, we have some exciting news. You guys know that we use Broadback Ironwork grinders two by 72 grinders those grinders by the time this video hits hopefully will be available on thatworks.shop through our website not only are you gonna be able to purchase the grinders and all the attachments on our website but we're gonna have a discount code for you to save a ton of money on your next Broadbeck Ironworks purchase so definitely check that out if you're into getting a grinder whether it's your first grinder or it's your next grinder Broadbeck is the answer. They're very versatile. They have all kinds of different attachments. Not only are they grinder makers, but they're also knife makers themselves. So they design their products to be used, not only by knife makers, but by anybody that needs to do any sanding work. They have all kinds of options. Definitely check them out. Now, before we get to my crazy experiment, which I'm going to give a go in this video live for you, whether it works or not, we want to give you an update on our blade show projects. Ilya is making a very crazy detailed, highly engraved mosaic longsword, much like the one he did last year, except this time it's mosaic Damascus instead of straight Damascus. So he's added a level of difficulty. We're going to update you on that, some of his carving progress. And I'm working on a really cool leaf blade with some crazy ladder pattern. It's a modified pattern. I still have a lot of the patterning to do to it. And then we can start forging out the actual blade.
One more thing I forgot to tell you guys. Very important. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cash is back in the studio. Chris Cash is back to work. Back here. Back in the hot shop. Yep. With the slob master. Uh, we're sizing some wrought iron for some wrought iron hammers. Woo! Woo! Back. Back. Hot. Nice and cozy. One more cool thing that I forgot to mention is that I finally brought my anvil to the shop. Only problem is, it's got a little bit of pitting on the surface, so I gotta grind it down, but instead of using a fancy surface grinder, all you need is a heavy steel bar that's flat, and some sandpaper, a little bit of elbow grease, and a whole lot of work, and you can flatten the surface of your anvil a lot quicker than you may think. All right, enough with that. Let's go ahead and start forging my main blade show project. Alright, while I continue forging the preform of my sword, let's check in with Ilya and see where he's at with his Blade Show project. Once all the forging and primary grinding is done on the sword as well as all the fittings, it's time to introduce some embellishment. I start out with the guard and use the narrow wheel as well as the file to introduce some gothic elements to it. You know why this is here? Why? Put it back. Meanwhile at home, I begin the engraving work on the blade. First off, I trace the design that I sketched out earlier onto the blade after additional sizing. Then I begin the primary cuts, those I will follow throughout the procedure.
once I'm tired of engraving on the blade, as it is quite loud, I start working on the silver sleeve that will go on the sword handle. For that, I'm using not so much engraving technique, but the chasing and repassate that is also combined with the engraving technique to get the proper form. So you all know we have our very own crazy Slavic creator here on That Works, Ilya himself. But I want to take a second and tell you about another crazy talented and fun to watch Slavic creator and that is Danny over at Super Krustan. So he's got a channel in Russia where he does some awesome builds, he does some crazy funny videos, he goes out and tests a lot of things that he makes in Russia with over 3 million subscribers but he decided he was going to launch a new channel in the US in English so he can share some of those builds in the English market. So here's a link in the description, go give him a sub, it's really worth it, it's great content, really supportive of him because he's supportive of us as well. So support our friends, go check out his new English channel, link is in the description below. All right, now let's get on to my wacky experiment. So, a little backstory. We told you guys we're working with Lincoln Electric. They not only send us some welders, MIG, TIG, stick, all kinds of different welders, but they also sent us a plasma cutter. Now, this plasma is only rated to cut about a quarter inch, maybe a little thicker, but Chris and I, the other day when we had set it up, wanted to test it out. So, we put a piece of uh, half inch, maybe five eighths on the table, and tried to cut within it. Made it about three quarters of the way through, which is basically a failure. It didn't cut. However, I started thinking I'm doing a lot of ladder patterning in my Damascus right now, different kinds of cuts. If you don't know what ladder patterning is, you basically make little cuts and then you forge it back down. And where those cuts are, you have some undulating pattern in your blade or whatever Damascus piece you're making. And I thought, hey, plasma cutter didn't go all the way through that thick. What happens if I take a straight laminate billet, go to the plasma and cut some lines into it? Instead of spending all that time using a hand grinder or using the grinders that I use, what happens if we use the plasma and just cut most of the way through, flip the billet over, and in the recesses, cut on the other side? So it'll kind of accordion out and work that way. However, I have to state when I do ladders, I always make sure my grooves aren't straight down, that they kind of do a little V-shape. That way they unfold nicely and they don't cold shut or forge weld back together. So this one should be interesting. When I make those cuts, they are going to be straight grooves, maybe at a slight angle, depending on how the plasma torch deflects the beam into the material. But I want to see if I can take my little leftover 200 layered billet, plasma cut my lines in it, forge it back out and see what kind of pattern we get. It might not work, I, very possible that I end up just ruining a 200 layer billet, but it's worth an experiment. It's a new way to use a plasma cutter. What do you say we give it a try?
So with my crazy experiment here, this is a great opportunity to use a brand new product from Broadbeck Ironworks, the grinders you guys see us use on the channel for almost everything that we do. And here to tell us a little bit more about this new product is Vince from Broadbeck Ironworks. So Vince Molina with Broadbeck Ironworks. Um, yeah, we, we're designing a uh, surface grinder attachment. Um, we, are, we just finished with the first round of prototypes. We now have the second round of prototypes in order. Um, we, have, we achieved about plus or minus three thousandths flatness over a 12 inch uh, section with the initial prototype. Uh, we're hoping to maintain that or improve on that on the second round. Um, they should go on pre-order at the end of July and then we'll be going on, uh, we, we hopefully will be delivering them by the end of August. So that's, that's the goal. Awesome. Now, one of the things that I love with working with Vince and Ryan at Broadbeck is that not only are they making grinders and selling grinders, but they're also very good knife makers themselves. So before they even put some of these prototype products in their pros' hands, like me, Jason Knight, uh, Jay Nielsen, guys like that, they're testing them out. They know what works. They know how it should be. They're not just trying to make a quick buck. They're trying to make things that we as knife makers and blade makers are going to use, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I typically will use our prototypes for at least three months or so in my shop, um, put them through their paces uh, before I even give it to our pros. Once our pros receive it, they put it through their paces and then we get their feedback. Um, we have guys that are making everything from knives, swords, hammers, different things, and each one of them brings a different perspective and a different set of feedback to us, which we then include into the evolution of each one of the attachments to make sure that they are not just knife maker tools, but they're right. a fabrication tool that yeah. different people in different types of fabrication and artwork can use. Absolutely. I, I'm really excited what you guys have. They've, they have some other attachments that we're not going to talk about just yet that are going to come out in a couple months. But let me go ahead and give you my crazy little project sure. and let's see what this surface grinder can do. Absolutely. Cool. Getting there. All right, that was awesome. The surface grinder attachment for Broadbeck really works quite well. We got our billet nice and clean. Now let's move to the forge, heat it up. Like I said before, we're probably gonna have to do some forge welding. It's not really gonna unfold like I like most of my ladder to do. Probably gonna be forge welding some of those bits and pieces back together and then pulling it out into a blade, if it works. So let's move to the forge. We're gonna heat it up to forge welding temperature. We're gonna flux it, and then we're gonna go straight to our yin yang power hammer and try to forge weld this thing back together, get it drawn out, and see what kind of crazy pattern we get. Hopefully, and I think it will, turn out great. All right, we got our billet welded back onto a holding stick. Let's go ahead and flux it, put it in the forge, and see if we can't forge this thing out into a beautiful blade.
One of the other really cool things that we have going on at That Works is we got these brand new promotional limited edition t-shirts made. This gives you a glimpse into our shop. It's the view from our forge to the power hammer. You can see it has the Slavic goodness, the three stripes. This is our Yin Yang power hammer. It also has the barrel which Ilya quenches all his hammers in and keeps all his tooling on when he's forging. This t-shirt design was made by Adam C, a very awesome artist. Check his work out on Instagram, Adam C. But these are gonna be available on the That Workshop shop. We did not go through Cafe Press or Teespring or anything like that. We actually paid to have a custom screen print made of these t-shirts, so they're limited edition. We had a run of them made. Check them out, they're super cool. If you guys can't afford one of our knives, one of our swords or a hammer or anything that's very expensive you can't afford these they are very affordable check them out on thatworks.shop help support us and look really good doing it this is a really nice t-shirt high quality print check them out today all right let's get back to forging our experimental blade All right, the power hammer portion of our forging went great. It looks like our pieces consolidated, forge welded where they needed to be. It looks like we have a pretty solid blade blank. From here, I could just go straight to the grinder, grind either a dagger blade or just a knife out of this. However, with ladder patterns, it's a much better idea to forge as much of your bevels as possible. Your patterning doesn't go all the way through the steel, so the more of that that you grind away, the less pattern you'll have. Your nice, sharp ladder will soon turn into these really slow waves and if you grind too much it'll just turn right back to normal laminate. So I'm going to go ahead move to the anvil, forge a little bit of my bevels in and then we'll go to the grinder and check and see what we've got. All right, so during the hand beveling, I noticed some places where my grooves weren't quite forge welded. So I was flexing, and then I was using the rounded in the corner part of the hammer to kind of push those grooves back together to try to get them to forge weld. I think I still have a few problem spots, so I stopped forging the blade. I just got it straight and ready to grind. I think we can achieve a successful blade out of this. I think I'll have to grind quite a bit off the back edge where I saw some of that coming apart. One side is completely perfect. The other side has some of the issues. So we should at very least be able to grind the good side clean and see what kind of pattern we have. But I'm going to try to salvage a knife. I don't like to throw anything away.
All right, I was able to salvage a decent blade out of this. I went ahead and polished one whole side out. The other side's still rough, but I did get through most of the problems. I had to grind a lot. It's kind of a thin blade at this point, but it's definitely enough for us to test our experiment and see what kind of pattern we can get. I only ground it to about a 220 and then did a little scotch bread on the surface, but we can go ahead and etch the blade, take a look at what we got, determine was it worth all of this trouble. All right, so we're gonna etch it in some ferric chloride. Should only take a couple seconds and then we'll be able to see uh, whether or not this was worthwhile. Kind of excited, kind of nervous. All right, so this blade is made out of 1095, 15, and 20. So even though we haven't heat treated, you're still gonna be able to see the contrast. All right. Well, we definitely have a good pattern. It's not quite as disturbed as I wanted it to, but you can see how our little cuts made a breakup in the pattern. All right, I'd say our pattern most definitely worked. However, this side that I cleaned off completely looks pretty darn good. This side still has some of those white lines in it. Those white lines are from the actual plasma slag that was forge welded back in. So it's not very attractive. So you definitely, if you're gonna try this, wanna make sure you get all those plasma uh, slag bits out of the grooves before you try forge welding it. All right, so should you try this or should you not try this? I'd have to say, drum roll, brrr, don't try it. I did just straight lines. It most definitely wasn't worth my time. I should have just used a hand grinder. It would have been quicker, would have forge welded better. In this case, if you're going to try this, and I do suggest some people playing around with it if you have a plasma cutter, do a much more elaborate design in your plasma cut. Make it worthwhile. Just straight lines. I might as well have done it on a hand grinder or a sander. So maybe try some little burst patterns, some scroll patterns. Hell, even try writing your name in the blade and reforge welding it that way. But doing it for straight ladder, I have to say, this is not the way to do it at all for many different reasons. I would, however, categorize this as a successful failure or failed success as far as an experiment goes because we did get it all the way through to a usable blade and we learned a lot along the way. So one of the main things I want to address for ladder patterns is coming up right now. All right, let's talk about ladder patterns real quick and what makes a good ladder. So here's our bar, right? When we cut our grooves in, say they're straight, grooves with say a hand grinder and then on the other side we cut them in in the recesses that our grooves were not in on the other side right that way when you forge this it kind of unfolds itself and comes out that works one way the other way that I prefer to do is here's my bar the grooves that I cut in are v-shaped so I do this almost. Maybe not quite exactly like this, but this is exaggerated. And then on the other side, I V it the other way. Right? That way, not only does it unfold, but when I'm compressing this way, I'm hitting the peaks of this material, pressing it in on itself, right? Pressing this in on itself. There's nothing that's gonna force these into each other and force a sloppy forge weld. Everything is gonna compress and I'm gonna get that compression of the pattern that I want. Now what happened with the plasma cut is actually the exact opposite. Here's my bar. When that plasma beam came in, right? So when your plasma beam comes in at a little bit of an angle, it then deflects even more. So some of my cuts which looked to be straight down, my cuts were actually at a bit of an angle. 
Now, not only were they at a bit of an angle, like this, but they actually exploded and got a little, like in the bottom of the beam of the plasma, it burns a little harder. So I was essentially creating these little like dovetail shapes, right? So my material, when I start hitting down on it, was immediately closing in on itself, trapping the hole here, and nothing was really getting all that compressed, right? The very last thing you want to happen with ladder, you really want your, your materials to compress this way so that you have more layers showing in some areas and less air, uh, layers showing in other areas that you would cut away. So we did learn some things. Do your ladders, try to make your grooves at least, at very least, when you do these straight, straight cut ends like this, come in and round the very little bits of these corners over just a little bit and it will save you so, so much time and produce much, much, much better patterns. You guys may have noticed that lately we've been ramping up the amount of major build videos on our channel. And the real reason is we switched focuses. We know that we need to build this channel. We know you guys like seeing major builds. So we're trying to bring you guys more and more of that instead of all these vlog videos. However, it's still very important for us to do some of these in the work videos to not only highlight some of our new things we're working with, but also to show you where we are with our personal projects. We know that you wanna see these highly anticipated builds that you guys request. So we've also started doing some Instagram live videos. Ilya, that's at Slavic Smith and me at Matt Stagmer. We're both doing those live videos asking you your input, what we have. Yes, we also read all the comments on the YouTube channel and count those requests for sure, but we also like to have a live discussion. So if you guys haven't followed us on Instagram, make sure you go to Instagram, follow us, and you can participate in some of those discussions. Not only do you say, hey, I wanna see this build, but we'll say, why do you wanna see it? Oh, that's a good idea, we should do this, or maybe we're already doing something similar, so that one will have to wait. Those kinds of things get talked about, you get an understanding, and maybe you'll have a better request after we talk about it, or maybe your first request is awesome. So tune in to our Instagrams, and definitely participate in those live videos. All right, so weird thing happened right in the middle of editing this video. We got word that Blade Show 2020 is indeed canceled. It was very much the smart thing to do. It was going to cost a lot of us knife and sword makers a lot of money to get to the show and possibly not have too many buyers there. So sadly, the show itself is canceled, but we are going to persevere and press on with our Blade Show projects. I myself might chill out a little bit on the rush nature of getting it done, but I will be completing it over the next few months. Ilya will be doing the same because he actually has pre-sold his sword, so he has to finish that for a deadline anyway, so we'll still keep up to date with both those projects, but gives us the opportunity to make more and more videos of more cool stuff for you guys here on That Works. <laughs> Late, there's gonna be copper, silver. Oh my god! And thanks for watching this episode of In the Works. We're all making great progress on our projects. It's super awesome to have Chris back in the shop. And don't forget to check out thatworks.shop to see all the cool things that we're selling. As always, we ask you to like this video, comment below what you want to see us build next, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to That Works.